The key issue is moisture percentage in the case of baling and the, the principle behind you know, packaging or baling the, the crop is to make sure that you, you obtain uh, as much of the high quality material as you possibly can in the bale. And, um, and so that means maintaining the leaf stem ratio, uh, not losing leaves during the, uh, during the baling process. Um, it also means preventing any kind of post-harvest uh, degradation due to high moisture, which tends to be the, uh, the enemy of, of, of uh, quality post-harvest. So you have, you, if you have uh, high moisture, particularly with these big balers that we use out here in the West, the uh, uh, high moisture can be really a big problem, uh, causing molds, uh, causing um, the um, uh, degradation of the protein, and uh, in some cases, even spontaneous uh, combustion of hay. When we bale hay, we are trying to dry it sufficiently that it will not mold or heat in the bale and then it can be stored essentially forever as long as it's in a dry place. The moisture content that the bale needs to be depends on the bale size because smaller bales we can bale a little bit wetter, around 18% moisture, and then bigger bales like the one ton bales uh, need to be down around 14% moisture. And this in part is why we don't use the big bales in the Midwest and the Northeast uh, because we don't often get hay down to 14% moisture. So we'll go to the three by three bales, the half ton bales instead of the one ton bale. And then the one ton bales would be used in the arid Western United States. Now, if we're going to bale wetter than that, then we have two options that we should consider. Uh, we can bale above the moisture levels that are appropriate for storage if we add a preservative like propionic acid. And um, there are systems available that measure the moisture content of the hay and then meter the amount of propionic acid. The other alternative is, uh, particularly as we get above 30% moisture, is to take the bales and wrap them, either individually or in one long tube. And by wrapping them in plastic, we're allowing it to heat a little bit and for the bacteria to grow a little bit and use up the oxygen. And then that hay is preserved as silage in a bunker because the oxygen is not there and mold requires oxygen to grow. We don't want mold in hay because um, mold affects the palatability. A lot of cattle and other animals won't eat the hay. Mold can also uh, cause diseases in the animals, and the spores actually can be toxic even to humans under some circumstances. So uh, we should consider moldy hay as spoiled hay. We need to be very careful and to have it dry enough if we're gonna bale it or else treat it with acid or wrap it in plastic both from an animal and a human health standpoint. And we want to think about harvesting the leaves. Uh, the, the first thing, of course, is to have made the wind roll when uh, there was some amount of toughness in that hay yet so that it would hold on to the leaves in the merging or the raking process. The second thing to keep in mind is that uh, Really, the big balers do a pretty good job of picking that windrow up and making hay with minimal leaf loss. Raking is important to merge or rake the swaths together into a windrow. Oftentimes, we might want multiple swaths in one windrow so that we're closer to the capacity of the baler or the chopper and we can drive less over the field to harvest. Um, but we have to be very careful with raking because that can be a high leaf loss process if we're not careful. The, we want the leaves to have dried some, but we don't want them to be so dry that they're brittle. And then whenever that hay is moved, they fall off and they're left in the field. Remember, the leaves have the high protein content, about 30% crude protein, the stems are six and the leaves have the high energy value, about 450 relative forage quality, the stems are 60. So what we tend to see happening though, if people aren't careful, is when we cut the alfalfa, it's about 50% leaves and 50% stems. 
if we rake when it, we, and lose a lot of leaves, and we can end up with bales of hay that are only 30% leaves and 70% stems. So obviously we've lost tonnage and we've lost quality. A lot of growers uh, will bale at night and they'll bale at night because uh, what happens is, again, back to this issue of the leaves and the stems of alfalfa will dry at different rates. And the leaves will oftentimes be tinder dry in, um, in uh, alfalfa when the stems are not nearly dry enough. And, and so what the growers do is also you know, keep watching the stem moisture up into the point where they, they um, think that stem moisture is ready to go. And uh, then they'll wait for the dews to come in at night uh, that'll soften the leaves and, and enable the, the grower to obtain, uh, to obtain uh, a good leaf stem ratio and retain those leaves rather than having to be uh, knocked off by the baling process. And some growers, have, you know, there are even machines available that will, that will use, you know, use artificial dew to uh, wet, wet, just give a small amount of moisture to soften the leaves up so that they don't, uh, they don't, uh, aren't lost. You got to remember that that between the night and the and the late morning, there's probably a five percent change in moisture percentage uh, between, like, uh, you know, that dries as the crop dries down, the windrow dries down during the early morning hours. So that's why the growers oftentimes will bale at night because they'll have an ideal stem moisture and then they'll, they'll try to retain those leaves. Leaf retention is really the biggest challenge when it comes to baling. And we get a lot of leaf loss either during the baling process or during the raking process. Those are the two key processes by which we can lose our, lose our quality through leaf loss. So the key issues related to leaf loss during baling are moisture percentage, um, and the um, conditions under which it's baled. Uh, so the moisture percentage I'm talking about is the internal uh, moisture percentage of the stem itself um, and the average, uh, the average uh, moisture percentage of a bale. And uh, growers can actually uh, improve their situation by making sure that they bale during the time when the leaves are soft enough and, and uh, are not brittle and, and uh, uh, cannot fall off during that period of time and, and the, um, uh, they can also change it by improving the rate of drying uh, of the stem material. That's the wide windrow co concept and making sure that, uh, uh, that the uh, drying rate for stems is very as rapid as possible. Mm -hmm.